Welcome to another TCGU video brought to you by the Chariot Group. My name is Bob Jackman and today we're continuing our training of Smart Notebook software. This section is going to be uh, section 1.2. So here's your I can statements of what you'll be able to do after this section. So really what we're going to do a lot in this section is get into the beginning of using Smart Notebook software. In the last section you learned about how your smart board works in general using smart ink and kind of the basics of the board itself this one we're going to start using the software and get into the basics of that software and how that software works so to open smart notebook software you're going to see the icon that looks like this and you'll see that on your desktop or on your dock if you're on a mac uh, you're going to see that somewhere if you need to search for it you can go ahead and search for it when you open it up uh, it's going to look kind of like this when you save it your fa your files will look like this. So it looks like a blue sheet of paper, uh, have you. And that'll be the files. And they are a .notebook file extension. So if you're gonna save it, like if you were in Word, you'd be saving a .docx. In Notebook, you're gonna save it as a .notebook. And so that's what the files are gonna be saved as. Another thing you're gonna notice is you're gonna have a smart board tools. And those smart board tools, uh, depending on your computer, they're usually down in the system notification area. So down here by the time, you may need to like click that little arrow to, to see that in, the, in there, mine's right there. If you're on a Mac, that may be on the menu bar at the top. And so you'll look for that. There'll be some times where we may uh, utilize that in some, of the, uh, in some of what you're doing. So that's what the smart notebook software, you're gonna open that up, it's gonna look pretty much like this. Here's your basic outline of the software, okay? So up here at the very top, we've got our, our menu bar and just like it's going to be like any other program in a way. We've got file, edit, view, insert, and under those you're going to see very basic things. Like under edit we've got undo, redo, cut, copy, paste. If I click on, on file we've got um, new, open, save, print, you know, those types of things. So it's very similar. That can be really fun to go through and see the different things that are in those drop down boxes. Okay. Right below that we've got our toolbar. And on the toolbar we've got all sorts of different tools. Uh, that we can use. Uh, we've also got this side tab area and in the side tab area is different things depending on the context and then we've got the stuff on the page itself. So let me go through a couple of those. So menu bar we talked about that already, file edit view When you click on those you'll see the drop downs and you'll get uh, a variety of things that you can that you can do there. Each one has its own drop down box very similar to other programs. The toolbar is broken up into a couple of different sections and so the left side, you've got your actions, okay, and those are different things that you can click and do. In the middle, we have our tools. Actually, in the, in the very middle right here, so right this section right here, you'll notice I've got smart response and then a puzzle piece, which are add-ons. And so those are different add-ons that you could have. There, there might be a math tools one in there as well, depending on what your licenses are. And so those are the add-ons. You may just have the puzzle piece, and that's fine too. Okay, next after that is the tools. And those are different tools like the pens and shapes and different things like that. And then after that are the properties of whatever you currently have. So if I select a shape, for example, then I've got the properties of that shape. And so that's a very contextual toolbar. It adapts depending on what it is you're doing, which can be uh, really, really helpful. And you'll see that change as I put the pen back, it goes away. It's also a customizable toolbar. Okay, so there's a, uh, a settings wheel on the far right, uh, or I can right click on the toolbar and that will bring up the customization. We'll get more into that later, but just know that it's there. The side tab, so this area on the side is our side tabs, and you'll see these different tabs here, and that's kind of a description of what those tabs are. The most popular tab is the top tab, which is the page sorter tab, and that shows me all the pages in my file, kind of like you'd see a, like a PowerPoint slide deck or something like that. And so these are notebook pages in our notebook file. And so we've got the different pages there. The next one down is the gallery. We'll get into the gallery a little bit more later where you can find um, content that you can add to your lesson. So that may be pictures or interactives or sounds that you can add to your lesson. Next is attachments. If you add any attachments to the file, uh, those will be in there. We've got properties. That's properties based on what's in there. We've got an add-on tab. And then you may also have a response tab if you've got response installed. 
And so notice as I press these different tabs, the side tab changes to display that specific content. So if I'm looking at the gallery and I wanna go back to seeing my pages, I just click back on the page sorter tab and that's gonna take me back there. We'll get a little bit more into that uh, and then those different tabs as we go along. Just know that's kind of how that works. The other thing with the uh, page sorter tab is, or sorry, with the tab, side tabs, there is an arrow on the, on the side tabs here, a double arrow, when I click that, that'll move the side tabs to the other side. So I can put that on either side, depending on what side I prefer to teach from. I'm right-handed and I like to keep my body facing my students, so I tend to teach on this side of the board. That's just how I've always done it, and so I'm more comfortable over here, so I like to leave that here, okay? Um, also, I forgot to mention with the toolbar, on the toolbar, there's a double arrow here on the far right underneath the settings wheel. And when I press that, that puts the toolbar on the bottom, which makes it easier to re reach for students. Also for teachers who maybe have a hard time reaching the top of the board, that can be helpful as well. And I can press it again to put it right back up at the top. So that can be something that's uh, useful is having a little bit of customization of where those side tabs and that toolbar are. Next is the drop down menu. So, you know, I've got my toolbar, my menu bar, my side tabs. This main area is the page. And so when I've got the page here, anything I put on that page is an object. And so I can touch and move my objects around as long as they're not locked down. If I touch on an object, it will select it. And you'll see that blue border around it. There's a green, um, green circle on the top. We can rotate and resize those. Um, but there's also one that's very important is on the, on the top right, there is a drop down box. And when I click on that, I'm gonna get that contextual menu. That's the same menu as if I right clicked. Remember we learned how to right click in the last video. And so if I right click that or if I hit that drop down box, I'm gonna get all those options. And the cool thing about that is everything I want to do can be found in at least one, if not more than one place. Um, whether that be the, the menu bar at the top, the toolbar in one of these side tabs or in that drop down box. So if I wanna do something, I remember, oh, well, I, there was something I saw but I can't remember how to do it start searching, just go through all those, those uh, menu bars at the top, go through all the different things on the toolbar, make sure you're comfortable with all those icons and what they mean. Look in the drop down box, look in the different side tabs, eventually you'll be able to find that. Okay, floating tools. So if you've got an older version of Smart Notebook, maybe version like 11.4 or earlier, you're gonna have floating tools. If you've got one of the newer versions, starting in version 14, the floating tools are no longer there and they've been replaced with that Smart Ink. And so I'll create a separate video going in depth on the floating tools because I'm currently using 15.2, so I don't have floating tools available to me. So look for a different video on the floating tools if you happen to have those. Uh, those will appear, looks like this, it'll appear on the left side of your screen and it's kind of annoying. Uh, if you need to get rid of that, just click on the Smart Board Tools, that icon we showed you earlier and in one of those options we'll say hide floating tools and that will hide those. They can be useful at times and we'll get into some different situations where that can be useful. Uh, just know that they can be hidden uh, and I'll have another video for those later. Object handle. So as I click on an object, it selects it. I've got the drop down box, but I also have two handles. The green one on the top allows me to rotate and the gray one or white one on the bottom allows me to resize. Okay, so that's really helpful. As I go to resize, it's going to try to keep the same aspect ratio. If I want to break that aspect ratio, the easiest way that I do it is I just go straight down. Okay, a lot of, sometimes teachers kind of go out at an angle. We don't want to do that if you want to break the aspect ratio. I'll go straight down until that breaks. Let's try that again. Oh, that's going to be Henri today. So usually if I go straight down, that'll break the aspect ratio. Oh, you know what? That's um, text. Let me try with the star. Okay, see how that broke? The reason the other one didn't break is that's text, and you can't break the aspect ratio on text. So now I can make it tall and skinny or short and fat, so I can break that aspect ratio if I want to. Sometimes you may not want that, so be aware that that's how that works. Um, if I'm on a 800 series board or a flat panel that has multi-touch, all my multi-touch boards allow me to use two fingers to rotate my objects or two fingers to resize my objects. So utilizing those two fingers, and I try to do two, a lot of times people are trying to use you know, their thumb and their finger to pinch and zoom like you would on an iPad. This is so much larger than an iPad, it's a lot easier to use a finger on each hand for the most part. I mean, it, you can get it to work, but it is a little bit trickier. Using fingers on separate hands becomes a lot easier. So anytime you've got a multi-touch board, you can do that. 
So again, here's an example. How might we use that to help students learn? And so rotating and resizing, what we can do is, here we've got an example of a graph. And so we've got these different bars that we're going to stretch and, and make work. And so here's a couple of ways we could do this. Let's say we're saying, you know, pick your favorite color. We've got six, six people who, who, use, uh, who like red. I could rotate this, turn it upside down. And the reason why I'll do that is so that I can resize it. And then I can just drag that up to the six and do it that way. Or I could take it, drag it up to the level that I want, pull it straight down. And so here we're utilizing this concept to show teaching graphing skills and how to create a, a bar graph by taking some simple shapes as, such as rectangles and stretching them and making them fit a certain size. So again, we want to make sure we're connecting these, um, these concepts to what you're actually teaching, your actual curriculum. Uh, so think about that as we go along. But that's a great way to, to engage the students and utilize these to help them start to see how those, how those concepts work. Okay, real basics of using Smart Notebook. So I open up Smart Notebook, I'm gonna get, if I just open it up, I'm gonna get a blank white page. Um, all I need to do is just pick up a pen and I can start writing. Okay, so it's really simple and really easy. Um, there are a couple of boards where you'll need to tell the, tell the computer that you're gonna write. So in those cases, you may need to select something, but for most of them, if you've got an active pen tray, you're gonna pick up the pen and you're just gonna start to write, okay? If I want text, if I'm in notebook and I want to type text, just click where I want that writing to go and just start typing. Got a keyboard here. I can just start typing, okay? So a lot of times I will be sitting at my desk creating my lessons before a class. So I don't usually type a lot on the board. I type a lot on the computer, sitting at my computer while I'm creating lessons ahead of time. So you can type that up and just move that text around, okay? I can move anything around just by clicking and dragging it. So very simple to set up a page and create something that I want whether that be in class or ahead of time preparing. There is an auto hide. So there's a little checkbox on the side tab that says auto hide. And what that does is that basically makes it so that side tab area, sort of the side area disappears. And then I have to click on the tab to bring that back. And that seems like a really good thing, but what you really wanna be doing is going full screen. We'll talk more about that later. I tend to not use the auto hide because a little bit later when we start getting into the gallery and you really start creating um, that becomes a, a problem. It gets in the way, it actually slows you down a little bit. So I tend to turn the auto hide off. What you really wanna do is create your lessons uh, and then have those in full screen as much as possible. So a lot of times when teachers are saying, well, I like the auto hide on so that I can have more space, go full screen, you're gonna get even more space that way. It's gonna be more effective for you. Also the cursor, when I say the cursor, I mean up on the tools section of the toolbar, there's a picture of a, a cursor, it looks just like that arrow go back to that. So anytime anything weird is happening, sometimes you need to go back to that cursor because it's still on a particular tool and that can cause some problems if you get stuck on a particular tool and you're trying to do something and you keep drawing something, you don't want that anymore, go back to that cursor. Okay, uh, with the drop down box, so one of the most basic things would be to recognize text. So if I hand write something, I can click it to select it. Now when you click it, you wanna make sure to click on the writing itself, not just near it. I see a lot of teachers are like underneath it or, or next to it or in the middle of a circle. You wanna click on the writing itself, that will select it. Then you're gonna click the drop down box and right at the top I've got recognize and I can recognize that text and that will convert it to text, okay? Um, with that, once I've converted it to text, I can't erase it. So if I pick up my eraser and try to erase it, it's not gonna erase because it's not ink anymore, it is now text. So, but that's something that's really kind of fun is you can come up here and, and write something and then quickly convert that to text and then it's the same as if you've typed it. And the cool part about that is I found the smart board is pretty smart, it can read my handwriting even when it's really bad. So I used to tell my students, hey, if the computer can't read your handwriting, nobody can, so you need to write with better handwriting. But it surprisingly, I mean, there were times where I couldn't really read what the students were writing, but it would convert to text just fine. So it does a, a really fantastic job at that. And that's one thing that you can do as far as, as doing that. You don't wanna be doing that with really large amounts of, of writing. Um, it can be problematic, but it will convert lots of, of writing together. Um, I would recommend if you're gonna do stuff like that, type it ahead of time so it's easier to read. Touch recognition, and what this is, this is a fantastic piece, is it can tell the difference when you are using the pen, your finger, and your fist. And so what that means is I come up and I can write with the pen, 
And then without putting the pen back, I can use my finger to move it. And it knows that I'm using my finger and not the pen. So it knows to not write. And then I can use my fist and it recognizes my fist and erase. And it's really cool that it can tell the difference because it makes it much more fluid for you to just write something, move it around, use your fist to erase. There are a few series of boards that Smart makes that do not have touch recognition. Uh, and that's gonna be like the old, uh, the old 500 series boards. The 600 series boards have it turned off by default and we'll talk about how to turn that on in just a second. The 800 series boards have it. The, um, the six M600 series boards do not have that and the 4000 series uh, flat panels don't have that. So not every single one necessarily has that. Uh, the 800 series boards and the 6000 series fl interactive flat panels will have that turned on by default. So if you just use the pen and use your finger and it knows the difference, great. If for some reason it doesn't know the difference, what you can do is on the pen tray, you can hit the question mark button if you've got a question mark button on the pen tray. Or you can go down to your smart settings, your smart board settings, click on that and go to um, smart settings. Uh, if I click on this, I can just click touch recognition settings. If I hit smart settings, then I'm going to come in here and go to hardware settings. And then I'm going to go to some mouse and gesture settings. Okay, once I'm in here, uh, you see I've got this option that says enable touch recognition. So by default, that's going to be turned on. Uh, if I want to turn that, or it's, on many of the boards, it's going to be turned on. If I want to turn it off, I can turn it off, and then I can write with anything. Uh, if you've got an older 600 series board and it's unchecked, you can check that, and that will turn that on. So that smart uh, touch recognition is a fantastic feature. A lot of teachers like that. Even some of the older boards can do that. You just have to manually go in and turn that on. Uh, and a lot of the newer ones have that turned on by default. So that is what touch recognition is. Uh, and it's, it's really cool that it does that because it makes it much more fluid to, to move things around and, and interact with your smart board that way. Object awareness is it can tell the difference, again, it can tell the difference between your finger your, and the pen, but you can uh, assign different tools, to different, um, different tools to different objects. So for example, I can be writing with one color and I can use my finger to come up and select a different pen and a different color. So now my finger is writing in red, why did that not work? Uh, it's not working. It's supposed to work. So I should be able to use, let me try this one. So I can draw. It doesn't like me today. Let's try that again. There we go. And then I can pick up the pen. And so I could be doing both of those. It doesn't like me today. So I should be able to assign, you know, by using that particular pen or that finger, I can choose different objects and have them do different things at the same time. Uh, if you're on a 6000 series board where you've got one black pen and one red pen, those two pens can two do two different things as well. And so you could switch back and forth because it can tell the difference between the two pens. On this one, both the pens are the same. So if I assign one pen one thing, the other pen's going to do the same thing. So that's something to be aware of and uh, it's a great feature that's there. Alternate tools. So if I want to use other things to write with my smart board, um, I can use like a, a paintbrush to write on my smart board or uh, I could be using all sorts of different things to interact with that. Let me grab my paintbrush really quick. Okay, so I've got my paintbrush here. And so I can use my paintbrush or I could have a student hold a tennis ball. We may have a student with dexterity issues, especially need students who they can hold a tennis ball but they can't hold a, a pen. And so they can use that to write on the smart board. In order for that to work though, we need to make sure that touch recognition is turned off. So I could go back into the smart settings and turn that off there. On the 800 series board, all I have to do is touch one of the buttons and I hold it until it starts to flash. And once it's flashing, then everything I use to touch the board with will, will draw in that color. So what that means is the student can use a tennis ball, they could use a paintbrush. And so if I didn't do that, so if I just touch it again, it will turn that off. If I didn't do that, it may think that I'm actually using my finger and not a pen. And so that gets to be a little bit tricky. Uh, so I can use other objects to interact with the smart board doing that. I, had, I saw a teacher once who had a, a bucket of things that the students can interact with the smart board. They had like a Nerf sword, lightsabers, all these different toys. And it was really fun for the students, especially this was a younger grade, so the students who had a hard time reaching the top of the board it enabled them to reach the top of the board better. And it was just kind of fun for them to interact with the board in different ways. And so you'll need to look and see what fits your, 
your personality in your classroom best, but there are other things that you can do um, to interact with your smart board. Some of the gestures that you can do. <clears throat> so one of the, there's different gestures built in a notebook that are helpful. One of them is called the circle, circle tap erase. So if I erase a circle and then erase it really quickly in the center of that circle, it erases everything in that circle. Let me, let me show you that again. So the way that works is I can use my eraser, I can use my fist. Sometimes it takes a little practice, but you're going to erase in a constant erase a circle. And then you're gonna tap that eraser right in the middle of that circle fairly quickly, and it's gonna erase everything in that circle. So it allows you to erase a large amount of stuff very quickly. Another thing I can do, okay, if I, as I write, every pen stroke is actually a different object but it tries to group those objects together. But here it didn't group Bob and Jackman very well. So if I want to group those, what I want to first do is do a marquee select. So I'm going to use my finger to touch and drag a box around both of these. See now how they're both selected. Once they're both selected, if I wiggle it back and forth, it will group them. Okay, I could also hit the drop down box, go to group, do it that way. But it's really convenient on the board to just wiggle it and group those together. One thing to be aware of with that is if I wiggle something on accident, it may actually break apart into every little pen stroke becomes a different piece, which can be problematic. And so it's good to know that I can highlight it again, wiggle it, and it will group those back together. So that is the grouping. Flicking is taking it and just moving it like this, and I can flick that across the screen, and it will have momentum, and it will bounce off the walls and the ceiling, which is kind of fun. So students really like that, it's a, a lot of fun. You've also seen me swipe already, so if I swipe, so basically a flicking motion but not on an object, just in a blank space, that allows me to turn the pages, which can be very helpful. We already talked about rotating and scaling, which is rotating objects and making the objects larger by using two fingers. But again, that's really easy to do. Uh, and that only works on the multi-touch boards, as well as if I'm in an area where I'm not on the, pa or on the page but not on an object, if I do that, I can zoom in on the page. And we'll talk more about zooming uh, a little bit more later. And then also panning. I can use two fingers if I need to scroll up and down. That may not necessarily work everywhere, uh, but in notebook that will work. Okay? So those are the basic gestures. And that's it for this section. So you should be able to open, start using the software, kind of have the basics of that software down. Uh, and then what we're going to do in the next section in 1.3 is we're going to start getting into some of the basics of that software, navigation, some of the tools on the toolbar. Hope you've enjoyed this section of our Smart Notebook training and hope you join us for the rest of these videos as we continue through our training. Please feel free, for, uh, feel free to share this with others and thanks for watching.